This is the Japanese Transformers Legends Super Carter Robot Target Master Hot Rod. It's a figure with a not so bad robot mode and a really great vehicle mode. It's also the same mold as the Titans Returns figure. He comes in a nice packaging in his vehicle mode. Here's a look at the top of the packaging, the bottom, here's a look at the side and the other side. Here's a look at the back, it shows off Hot Rod's vehicle mode, robot mode, the Target Master, and it shows a figure inside Hot Rod's vehicle mode, which is actually the head right here. It can transform. Now let's open it up. Here's a look at the instructions. Here's the front. It's got some nice artwork on there. Here's a look at the back. It's a, it's a, I can't read any of that. You got the tech specs right here. And if you open it up, you have a little manga to read. This would be cool if I could read it. What the fuck is going on here? And if you open it up a bit more, you have the instructions. Now let's get to the actual figure itself. Here is the figure in vehicle mode. His target master, Firebolt, which transforms into his weapon. And his head. And if you turn it upside down, you can see an even smaller head. Now let's take a look at the actual vehicle mode first. I do genuinely like the vehicle mode on this. However, it does feel a bit light. It's not able to roll very well. This right here will drag against the ground, so be careful. But the general sculpting of the vehicle mode is really nice. It's got a nice silver on the pipes. The wheels look great. It's got a nice big yellow spoiler. I really like the designs on the front. You got the Autobot logo right there. I'm not a big fan of the darker crimsony red color though, but it's not really a big deal to me. Here's a look at the underneath. It looks very clean. Honestly, the vehicle mode on this is really nice. This right here actually can open up. And if you take his head, you can transfer Form it. This head is actually supposed to be the other way around. That's my bad. And the transformation on this is super simple. Just turn him over and bring that down. And there you go. That's a little figure. It's like a miniature version of Hot Rod. The head on this can spin all the way around. The arms can move up and down. The legs can go up like that. And they can bend. However, the legs cannot separate. Also, the back of the figure looks really weird because the whole head is still there. The figure itself has a bit of detail on there. It's got a yellow and red. And now we can just place them inside. There you go. And now he is eternally trapped. Here's a look at Firebolt and it has a lot of great detail on it, especially for something this small. He's got a nice head sculpt to it and the rest of the figure looks really great. Here's a look at the back with his big weapons back there and you also have this sticking out and if you turn it around <laughs> It looks like he has a big peepee. -pee. <laughs> now this has some nice silver paintwork on here. The head and waist are attached so they can spin all the way around. The arms are on a ball joint so they can move all the way around. They can move out about that much. The legs can move forward and they can bend. And you can also bring them back. I really like the amount of detail something like this has. Now you can also transform this. To do that, just turn his legs around. Make sure those arms are out. Bring this up. Now don't forget to turn this around. And now you can bring the legs back in here. And you peg them in a place right over here. Now you can just make sure to align everything up and there is the weapon which you can place right over here and I honestly think it's kind of weird to have the weapon at the front but it's not the first time a hot rod figure did that. Now here it is compared to the original G1's vehicle mode. Honestly, I like both of these vehicle modes. This one is obviously a classic, but this one has a more of a modern look to it. And just for fun, if you want to see, this weapon does not fit in there. The color schemes are similar, but they are different shades. They both have the pipes along the side and a similar design on the front. Here's a look at the bottom of both of them. I have other hot rods, but I'm not transforming them to compare with. I'm too lazy for that. There's a peg hole right here for other weapons. The Titans Returns figure comes with weapons that can fit in there, but not this one. I can put Coronation Star Screams in here. You know, and honestly, that doesn't look too bad. But now onto the transformation of the figure. First thing you want to do is bring that head out. We can yeet that off to the side. Now bring this back piece up just like so and then spin it around and flip it over. Just bring it in all the way like there. Now we can pull out his arms and then detach those arms. Then you can bring out the legs and the feet. Now bring this in. Bend the waist around. Bring this down and don't forget to flip this over. Bring out the hands and there is his headless corpse. Now for the head, just transform this back and you just plug it in right here. Now the robot mode on this is all right. It's not the worst, but it's not the best either. I feel like some of the proportions on this look weird, especially the arms right here look very long and the hands look kind of big. I also don't like how the chest piece can cover up the head when looking at it from certain angles. And then this big gap right here is also really bothering me. The legs on the figure are a bit loose, however. Now a closer look at his head, it's not a bad head sculpt, honestly. It's just the back of the head looks kind of like a mess. And I don't know if it's just me, but if you look at it from a higher angle, it looks like his eyes are closed. Now the chest area is pretty translucent. You got some panel work on the arms right here and on the legs. I do like the gray legs over here. They have a nice shimmer to them. They also have some detail 
tilts right there. I don't like how the inside of the thighs here are very hollow though. He's got some designs on his wrist right over there. Here's a look at the back of the figure. He does have some panel detailing on the spoiler and he has a little place where you can plug a stand into. Now looking at the side of the figure, he doesn't really have much of a backpack. It folds up pretty well, but honestly my biggest complaint with the figure is the gaping hole right here. You can take his weapon and he can hold it in his hand right here and he holds it pretty well. Here he is next to Hot Rod from a Transformers Universe 3 pack collection and here he is next to G1 Hot Rod. Here he is next to Armada Hotshot and now you might be wondering, but wait, this isn't a Hot Rod figure, but he is called Hot Rod in the Legends of the Microns, the Japanese version of Transformers Armada, so get fucked. Here he is next to Studio Series Hot Rod. Here he is next to Alternators Hot Rod and goddamn, this thing is an abomination. Fun fact, I was actually going to film a review of Alternators Optimus, but I hate this figure too much. Now let's move on to articulation. The head can move from side to side, however it's too thick to spin all the way around. The arms can move up and down like that, and they are on a ball joint, so they're able to spin all the way around. The elbows can bend, the hands can go in and out, but that's part of the transformation. Legs are on a ball joint, so they can go out that far. They can move back all the way there, in, out, and forward. The thighs can spin around, the knees can bend, and the feet can move back and forth a bit. Overall, it's not a bad figure, and I like having the Takara version of stuff. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out this video right over here. And a big thank you to all my patrons that support me on Patreon for only $1 a month. The link is in the description below.